What's going on, sign shop owners, Shop Fox Universe? How's everybody doing out there? It's your boy Peter Karunas here with another video. And I was doing some thinking uh, when, when thinking about what we were going to talk about here this week. I really wanted to answer a couple of questions regarding the website about your sign shop or print shop website. That's what we're going to be focusing on here today in this video. So you're not going to want to miss this one. So stay tuned. All right, so we're going to be doing some segments with Shopbox in the upcoming months here. And this one we're going to highlight as the marketing segment. Now, when we talk about marketing, we talk about how we can generate leads and we talk about how, you know, how people can find your business. It all starts with your website. It all starts with having a really intense website. What do I mean by intense? Well, when we were in business 10 or 15 years ago, you could get away with having a five to 10 page website. You know what that looks like. You know, the about us page, a services page, a portfolio page, a contact us page, and your homepage. And that's pretty much it. You know, you can grow that into different components, but the times have changed. The way that we search for things has changed. The way that we look for businesses on the internet right now has changed and it's changed due in large part to smartphones and smart devices like tablets and iPhones and Samsung phones and, and the way that people are searching for us, well, it's all about getting them or getting your business listed on the palm of their hands, right? They wanna be able to get you here rather than get you on their, uh, you know, through older methods back in the day. So, what am I talking about here? How do we intensify your website? Well, when it comes to your website, if you don't have a website like this right now, take this as a step one to really getting setting yourself up for success with, with your digital marketing efforts. And that is you really have to build out your page with some substance. We really have to start building upon the girth of your website. Uh, Every service should have its own page. Every page should have a click to action, a call to action, if you will. Um, it should have the proper keywords. You should be optimizing these pages. You should have just about a page of content that answers and provides levels of, of expected questions and answers that people are going to find because when Google sees this now, how many of you actually Google a question, right? How do you build a channel letter sign? How do you build a carved sign? If you are thinking about what people are asking, you can actually put these questions in your website and then when Google crawls your website, those answers are going to come up, they'll click on your link and now you're building your organic audience a little bit better than you were doing before. So you have to start thinking outside the box here. Your website that used to be five to 10 pages needs to now be anywhere between 50 and 100 pages. You really have to start thinking about building all of your questions and answers into the framework of your website. That's how you're going to start building URL authority within your marketplace. So I have a question here from a gentleman named Josh on one of the sign shop talk forums and he asks me, have I had any success with building a funnel on a website? And this is really where I wanted to take the majority of this video because this is a great question. On top of building on all your pages and making sure that you provide really great insight and optimization on all of your pages. And I'm not talking about, you know, what people think SEO is now. I'm really talking about answering questions on a landing page. People that are going to have questions like how much a sign typically is or what they can expect, permitting questions, um, time frame questions, expected cost questions, answer these on your website. Trust me, you'll thank me for that later. But I digress. Let's get back to that question. When it comes to a funnel, this is actually one of my 
favorite things to do to start building conversions with your website. That's right. The website, it's a tool. You have to start looking at it as a tool. This is your sales engine here. People should come in to your funnel through your website. People should come into your sales pipeline through your website. So in order to do that, you should probably start thinking about a funnel. Now in my career, I've had the opportunity to build a really great funnel. So a few years ago, I had the privilege of building a conditional logic funnel. I didn't know what it was at the time, but this funnel, if you will, really helped bring in conversions. So you see this all over the internet now. Uh, for our industry, it's very complex, but it's a question and answer logic form, okay? So let's think about it this. You start asking some very vague questions at the top, and then you start getting very specific towards the bottom, towards getting you with the right answer. And then based off of the customer's interaction with your form and how they answer these questions, you're going to provide the results that they're looking for and effectively entering into your funnel with a little bit more of an understanding of what they're looking for. Let me start off by saying, Funnels are not for everybody. They're very expensive to build. They're time consuming to build. But once you build them, you effectively have the engine, the foundational piece to your sales pipeline. Doesn't matter who's working in your business anymore. Doesn't matter which sales manager that you have. Your sales engine will always be there and it will always be running when you're there and when you're not there. So let me give you some examples of the types of questions that you should be thinking about when you're building your conditional logic form. We offer so many different types of products, so we have to get really granular here. Let's ask the first question. Is this for personal use or business use? So now you know if this is a person that's buying, a B2C customer or a B2B customer. Based off of how they answer, it'll take them to the next selection and then you say, is this an interior sign, an exterior sign, a trade show sign, Based off of that selection, your next bunch of questions will open up. Is this illuminated or not illuminated? If they answer illuminated, now you're only gonna display, okay, here's your channel letters, here's your illuminated three-dimensional letters, here's uh, a light box, your sign cabinets, your, your illuminated awnings. Okay, based off of that, you can then ask them, okay, what color, what size, what parameters, right? And then possibly at the end, at the end of that funnel, based off of all their uh, answers to the questions that you've asked, now you have the option of either doing one of two different things. You can ask for a quote, right? So the customer can request a quote based off of the input selection that they've been pre uh, created. You can provide an instant quote, which I don't really like to recommend, but there are a lot of funnels that do that. Or you can schedule to have them book an appointment to discuss the, the topic that they just put into the form. So that is actually the one that I like the most to schedule that first call. So once they schedule that call, this is a great time to call me. Uh, it's convenient to them to, to, to talk to you about their project at this time. This is a great opportunity for your you know, your opener, your sales manager to make that call, to reach out, to talk to them a little bit about their project. And then, you know, effectively having your website really be that first step, that first interaction with the customer that, well, can really dictate the outcome of the entire sales funnel process in your business. So I love funnels. I think that funnels are the, one of the best things that websites sh should have. And if you're thinking about how you can grow your business this year, what you can do differently this year when it comes to, you know, shop box focus. What are we gonna do this year that's different than what we did last year and years prior? This is a great opportunity for those shops to really get on the phone with a web development team, talk to them about strategy, implement a really great funnel into your website that's going to help kickstart the sales process, right? Because most people have a form, where the customer has to fill in what they're looking for and then that will orchestrate the call to that customer. And that's fine too. Uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with that, but if you're really looking to have your website be a great tool for you, funnels are the way to go. Now, 
Depending on your level of web development skill or if you're outsourcing this sort of thing, once an appointment is booked or once that call is scheduled or once you have an instant quote generated from your funnel, you then can do a couple of things that connect with your POS system. You know, you can take that appointment, put it right into your calendar. You can orchestrate automated SMSs. You can orchestrate automated emails that get sent out sequences or workflows that can start. Uh, if you're using like a CRM like HubSpot or if you're using the Shopbox Pro CRM, there's a lot of things that you can do there with uh, Zapier. So you definitely want to take a look at some of those automated sites like Zapier or Automate.io. There's a ton of them out there that can create bots and certain, uh, certain workflows when, it's, when something happens, when a trigger happens then you can start automating some of your processes. So you might want to take a look at some of those added opportunities when you're discussing with your development team on how to implement this, this web design funnel here, this really great call to action funnel that you're trying to implement in your website. And lastly, as a tip here for your website, one of the ones that I really try and focus on myself a lot is really those call to actions. What is the call to action? What are you doing? What are you providing to your customers that are going to make them want to click on that page, to click on that ad, to click on your social media ads? What are they? You really have to take a deep dive into what people might want. Uh, is it an ebook? Is it a? Is it something that they can download? Is it a spreadsheet? Is it a price calculator? Is it a link to book an appointment? Is it a link to schedule a Zoom call? Is it a link to schedule a consultation? I don't know. That's up for you to figure out. Some of the ones that have worked for me really have depended on what the advertisement was all about. So if it was a, an ad online for service because their sign was broken, I was taking them to a form to instantly book their repair. They didn't have to get on the phone with anybody. They can literally book the appointment for somebody to come and fix their sign. They, they pretty much told us what was wrong with the, with the sign. Uh, they provided a picture if they were able to. They were able to book a time slot. They were able to see their price and hit confirm and then it would show up on our book and our techs would know where to go on a day to basis. And we had hundreds of these types of appointments. So depends on what you're looking to do. If you're advertising channel letters or an awning or vehicle wraps, it's really important that you maybe consider directing them into a funnel that's designed for that particular product. So if you create the overall funnel, like we discussed earlier, it's very possible for your development team to carve out a piece of that funnel for a specific product. So inside your overall funnel, you'll have little funnels for specific products. So if somebody says, yes, it's an outdoor sign. Okay, yes, it's, a, it's vehicle graphics. That is an element of the funnel that can be removed and then implemented by itself independently. So now, if you're doing an advertisement for vehicle wraps, you might want to direct them to just a funnel for vehicle wraps. And now you can actually say, like, this is the type of vehicle you have. This is, uh, is are you looking to do full wrap? Are you looking to do three-quarter coverage, half coverage, magnets, vehicle lettering, whatever the case may be? You can then take them to either a price where then they can actually say book an appointment or would you rather just remove the price and take it to uh, an element of let's schedule your appointment, let's schedule your vehicle to come into our shop to be inspected, to have a visual inspection of your vehicle. There's so many different things that you can do. That's why funnels are super important to website development here in inside of this industry, inside of many industries. But one of the things that I really want to get across to you guys before this, uh, before we conclude in this video here is that while funnels are great, funnels are amazing lead generating tools, they only work if you think about everything. And when you think about everything in our business, there's a lot. Right? So you're going to have to ask the proper questions for just about every sign that you want to add to this funnel. If it's a dimensional sign, if it's a carved sign, if it's an illuminated sign, if it's a vehicle wrap, if it's vehicle magnets, if it's a banner, if it's a retractable banner, you have so many questions to ask. You have so many different uh, 
products to offer that this is going to be a lengthy process. So if you're thinking about taking this undertaking on, understand that this is going to be a time commitment and understand that this is also going to be a monetary investment into the future of your business. But once you have it, you can always add to it and adding to it is actually quite easy. Um, and then once you have it built and it's all ready to rock and roll, it's all about perfecting it. How do you make the process go faster? What type of uh, UI does it have that people can consider streamlined? Because you don't want people dropping off. You want people to go through that from beginning to end of your funnel and booking that appointment or booking that call or getting that price because that's what the importance is of funnels is that the customer gets what their answer that they're looking for when they're done. They want to make sure that they get what they're looking for when they're done. So. 2022 is here. This year, it's all about doing things that are different, doing new things that we haven't done in the past. And this is where we're going to start. With 2022, are you going to make a web design funnel? Are you gonna get your development team hired? Uh, are you gonna get on Upwork and start bidding out this process to build this for your website? Because I recommend it. It was a game changer for me. It was a game changer for many sign companies. And, and if you have a funnel, if you wanna share it, if you're interested in learning where to go to create this, please leave a comment below. Share your funnel below. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people here that are going to want to see what your funnel looks like and maybe get some ideas on how to improve it as, as far as their business is concerned. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year, everybody. Let's get it going. 2022 is here. We're full steam ahead. COVID is still here, but don't worry, guys, because you know what? You always have to stay positive out there.